blessings in Yah and Yahushua HaMashiach. This is all night, your voice for biblical encouragement and teaching from the word of Yahuwah. Let us as followers of Yahushua HaMashiach be the salt and light. That's in Matthew 5, 13 through 16. This is where truth is shared and discussed, so you may be encouraged and challenged as the body of Yahushua and grow together. I pray everyone is safe and well. For those who are new to this podcast, welcome. For those who are returning, welcome back. It's great to have you. Salt and Light is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Getter, and MeWe. Please visit my pages on social media where we have two links posted. One takes you to the website where you can choose how to listen. We're available on Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, Deezer, Buzzsprout, Good Pods, and many more. The other link is to Patreon, so if the Lord so touches your heart to give and to support the work of this ministry, we do thank you and bless you. Salt and Light comes to you from AlitU. Please download the free AlitU app. Don't forget to subscribe to Salt and Light channel on YouTube as well and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Please like and share the link. Please visit our, the other aspect of our ministry, Salt and Light Art, on Facebook um, and the group pages as well on and as well as on YouTube, where you can see pics, reels of paintings, and upcoming art projects. Your support helps reach more people for the kingdom of Yah and to love up as a podcast and to grow this ministry. Once again, thank you for your support and your prayers. We all need encouragement right now. Be blessed and safe in the name of Yahuwah. I love you all. Praise Yah. Welcome to yet another episode. Um, thank you for your prayers. Um, I am getting better. Um, praise, praise be to Yah. Um, my body is still battling uh, here and there, uh, on and off. But for the most part, um, my voice is much better. My throat is much better. Um, and I'm not coughing as much. Um, and so I believe in, uh, believe in Yahuwah for the, the full healing. It's just been a little rough. Um, but that being said, you know, once again, thank you for your prayers. And thank you uh, for coming along on the journey. Uh, yeah, still growing this ministry. Um, and 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 all of these things. Um, I feel like he's he's doing it and he's gonna continue to do it. Um, please continue to pray for provision so we can get some new equipment. Um, you know, he's been put uh, putting in my heart to do a, a channel on YouTube. Um, I, I don't know exactly what that's gonna look like, but it's called, it's gonna be called Burden of Truth. And that's where we just, um, dive a little deeper into theological subjects and or issues and 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 all of these things um i do realize you know once people see an episode being like an hour long it's 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 a lot uh, people don't tend to listen or view um a video that is um that long in length um so we'll see what happens um but again just like you know uh, provision for the equipment and and so on and so forth and how how he's gonna uh make that come to pass uh, what that's gonna look like so you know um i asked him for the direction and and the blueprints and and everything like that or else it's just us doing what we want to do and and that's not really that's not how it works you know um we need to get the lord's leading um he, you know, Yahushua HaMashiach, um, his Ruha HaKadosh is the one that leads us and, and gives us wisdom and revelation and all of these things. So, um, and Yahuwah gave the uh, blueprint for Noah to build a boat, right? You know, it didn't come from him. Um, he gave him all the blueprints. So very, he was very specific how he wanted the measurements and, and, and everything like that. Um, and, and the materials. So, um, that being said, just, let me just, um, segue a little bit, um, current events wise. I know the, uh, I was somewhere yesterday and I saw it, it was on a, a TV a place where I was at and, uh, Uganda is passed a law. Um, is this is recent? You can look it up, uh, research it, and check it out. Um, they passed a bill forbidding uh, identification um, as LGBTQ plus, uh, and the laws are pretty, you know, pretty stiff. I mean, you can face jail time. 
and and or uh, fines. So that's that's pretty radical. Um, you know, there's going to be obviously a lot of pushback um, from various people and 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 also obviously in government and all of these things. Um, you know, so you know, there's a lot that that needs to be said about that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be unfolding um, and and is unfolding as we speak. Just the repercussions of of things like that and, and a bill like that getting pa actually passed. Um, and just also saw a post from Michael Brown. Um, I do follow him. I have a lot of his books. I usually um, pre-order his books before they actually come out and he, and he sends them and uh, they uh, he, he numbers them and signs them. You know, he's pretty solid, um, you know, Dr. Michael Brown, and, and check him out. Um, I, I might not hold to 100% of all of his teachings and whatnot, but he's pretty solid. Um, and I do enjoy his his books, you know, like with anything, take it with a grain of salt, um, you know, and, and continue to pray and, and seek the Lord, obviously, and, and hold everything up in light of scripture. Um, and all of these things. So, but um, he he posted something the other day, which is a uh, really and in line with um, what I feel and think um, when we, as the body of Christ, again, body of Messiah, come together and and have conversations and encourage one another and fellowship with one another and support one another. Um, and regarding things of theology now, the subject of demons and deliverance is a huge subject coming up again. Uh, it's always been there's different camps uh, within Christian circles that, you know, have different beliefs on 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 the subject. So uh, demons and deliverance, uh, it's coming up again um, recently. Um, and you know, I, uh, it's a huge subject, um, deliverance, and a lot of people point to the scripture. I believe it's in Luke, uh, I don't want to misquote it. I think it's 18.8 or something like that, where, you know, Jesus is talking with the uh, Gentile woman, um, you know, about regarding the crumbs, uh, regarding deliverance. He said, like, um, salvation comes from the Jews, you know, or, you know, paraphrasing here basically he said the yeah he has come to the house of israel yasharel first so those are the people whom yahuwah cut the covenant with right so the promises primarily are for the jewish people first or the or rather the the people of yasharel and then god's ultimate plan obviously includes the gentiles right so but she said, yes, but even the uh, don't give the crumbs to the the dogs. And, um, you know, she said, yeah, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And he says, woman, you, I, I perceive that you have faith. Um, basically, she was asking for healing. For, um, I'm sorry, uh, deliverance for her daughter, which was uh, her, her daughter was possessed um, by spirit. Um you know, so deliverance, and then Jesus said deliverance is the children's bread. So a lot of people look at that scripture and say, well, who's the children? Those who have received Yahushua, those who follow him, right? We're children of God, uh, children of, of Yahuwah. So that deliverance is for us. Now deliverance, when you look at even the, um, the, the translation I read a lot, the hallelujah scriptures, deliverance um, is used there is used um, instead of salvation. So whenever you, in in your modern translations, would read salvation, it says deliverance. So deliverance really does mean salvation as well. So when you look at so the word sozo, um, the full healing, the whole complete healing is not only physical um, and all of these things, but social, spiritual, psychological, mental. Um, it's a complete 
whole healing. So that is only found in Yahushua HaMashiach. That is only found in salvation itself, right? And the rest of the work is through sanctification. Um, the more and more we grow and walk with the Lord and mature and, and things like that, um, and the more we surrender to him. But the healing um, and the wholeness, um, being made whole, um, you know, it, it, that the word deliverance doesn't necessarily mean deliverance from demons or de or spirits, you know. Um, so I just wanted to to mention that it, it it does include that, but it's not exclusive to that. Um, they're just in that verse in that passage. He just happens to say that because the woman came to him asking him to heal his to to, to deliver his daughter from from a demon. Um, so, which he didn't have to, obviously, he didn't have to go to the woman's home. He just said, go, go home and your daughter is, is, is free. Um, you know, so because he perceived that she also had faith and from the comment that she made. So, um, you know, it's a lot, you know, it, it's a big subject, like I said, but he, he did, Michael Brown said, um, even with this subject, we should come together. There's going to be leaders are going to disagree. On uh, uh, it's it's not a question of if they disagree. There's going to be disagreements on these things. But he he also went on to say that that's okay. You know, I don't have the exact quote in front of me. Um, he basically he said that's okay, but let us come together and reason together, and um, at the end of the day, agree to disagree. You know, if if that's what we we get to that point where we could just say, well, I don't agree with that. So let's agree to disagree. Basically, what he's saying is the unity is more important than attacking one another and 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 going off into all these different camps and, and you know, within the body of Christ. And, and, and again, I, I always say I see this a lot on social media where people pigeonhole their arguments and 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 they get very dogmatic about the views that they hold and they're like you're right uh, they're like i'm right you're wrong uh scripture says this it doesn't say this you're you're interpreting scripture wrong i'm right look at you know we we we, we need to be careful doing things like that as we're attacking one another and belittling one another and really not we're not showing the love of yahuwah and and we should be we're, we're within the body so we should exhort one another. Um, yes, there's room for rebuke, you know, but even that's done in love, you know. But at the end of the day, can we agree to disagree and still be brothers and sisters in Christ, in Messiah? If we can't do that, then there's something really, really wrong. I know I wouldn't want to be a part of a faith that that all I see is people attacking one another. Because if you're, unbelie you're an unbeliever and you see that, why would you want to be a part of that, you know? Even though, you know, some of them you might have heard, right, of God and, 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 and you want a part of it and you're searching, you're searching for answers. But what you see is not something you want to be a part of. And that's really sad. You know, that's really sad. So the whole point is unity above all else. And I'm not, again, I'm going to put a caveat right here. I'm not saying let's just all agree to and, and just to get along and have peace. That's not what I'm saying. Paul didn't do that. The disciples didn't do that. Um, but again, speak the truth in love, and there's a way to do that without cutting one another down, without, you know, posturing and say, and just holding it, because that's pride, saying, no, well, I'm I'm right, and you're wrong, and, and you need to agree with me, or you're, you're in error, I'm going to stop fellowshipping with you. I'm going to, you know, and, and all that. And yes, that, that may happen, you know, but that's, that's not a thing for us to, to, to say, unless the Lord says cut ties with this brother or sister, you know, but anyway, I, I didn't plan on saying all of this, but I'm just very passionate when it comes to, to that subject of having disagreements within the body of Messiah, you know, can we do that as mature believers, you know, and even if you're a new believer, you know, um, take heart because that is uh, the end goal also is, is the unity of the body. Um, and we can't have disagreements and, and we're going to have disagreements, but 
that shouldn't hinder our walking together, you know, if that makes sense. That shouldn't hinder the building up of the body and the edification of the body, you know. So, and unfortunately, that's a, a thing we see, like the devil wants us to be divided. The devil wants us to bicker with one another and all that, you know, because then we, we're getting distracted and we're taking our eyes off of king, kingdom building and all of that. And, and um, we're taking our eyes off encouraging one another and loving one another, showing love one to another as we should, um, as the Bible exhorts us to do. So, um, you know, that being said, you know, again, I mention it only because I'm very passionate about it. And I, I happen to agree with his comment wholeheartedly. It's not it's not because it's him. It's I've said this numerous times, like over and over. Um, and I say it more and more, the more I see believers attacking one another on social media um, and all of these things. So, again, the subject of demons and deliverance, very controversial. Um, what does the word say and all that? Um, maybe y'all willing in the near future to do a, a series on that um, as well. Um, you know, because again, I, I mentioned quite a few times I come from Pentecostal roots. Um, so I've seen, you know, I've seen and heard, you know, I, and I believe in deliverance. I've seen, but a lot of people don't agree with, you know, uh, uh, they're like, show me one verse or one inst instance in the Bible where a believer is casting out a demon from another believer and, and so on and so forth. So um, that's where that comes in, into play. Um, and let me just say this, in a, a believer cannot be possessed. If you're a true follower of Yahuwah and you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, you're a born again believer. I'm not talking about a believer that just says, I believe, and they, they live, they're living lawlessly. You know, I'm talking about someone who follows uh, the law and, and well, you know, that's a whole nother c controversial thing. Um, are we saved by grace or do we also need to follow the law? But anyway, who follow the Ten Commandments, who hold to the Ten Commandments, who follow Yahushua, um, who serve him. I'm not talking about people who just say, you know, nominal Christians who just say, yeah, I'm a Christian and just, just keep it moving and whatever. Um, I'm talking about those who serve him cannot be possessed by a demon because the Holy Spirit has taken up residence within us. So, you know, that's how can you be possessed by a demon and also have the Holy Spirit? There's no way. So demon possession in that sense, a Christian cannot, um, cannot, that cannot happen. It will not happen. Um, but a believer can be oppressed. I believe, I, I, I believe that is, I believe that, that, if you, you, especially if you're in a backsliding state, you open certain doorways uh, uh, to sin that allow, um, that give demons and sp spirits legal ground to enter and harass you and oppress you, right? So, um, and then, but some people say, well, you don't need deliverance, you need discipleship. So, you know, that's a lot of things. We need people that we can be accountable to and who can uh, minister to us and counsel us. And, you know, um, of, if we're not coming to, to you, to you, to you who will him, himself, if we're not coming to him ourselves, then he, you know, are we seeking that help? Are we seeking godly counsel? Are we surrounding ourselves with people who follow him uh, and, that can, we we give have given them permission to speak into our lives, you know, um, or are we isolating ourselves so we could be comfortable in our sin and and all that, you know? So these are things that, again, it's a huge huge subject. So, um, apologies for rambling on there. That's not what this episode is about. This, uh, you know, we're still in the uh, end time series. Started the Book of Revelation. We went through it. We're currently in the Book of Daniel. Um, last week we did, uh, Daniel chapter nine with the 70 week prophecy and the, we spoke, we touched on the abomination of desolation. So this is chapter 10. This is, uh, the vision of the glorious man. So I'm going to do, uh, go through the, the whole chapter is, uh, verses one through 10, the chapter, chapter 10 verses one through 10 is the vision of the glorious man. Um, and then um, 10 through 
10 to 21 is the is prophecies concerning Persia and Greece. And I also just wanted to mention that, um, you know, the genre itself, the end times, you know, we've been discussing it. So I just want to give some background into uh, that genre itself. And, and again, when you study the Bible, you know, the reli reliability of the scriptures and all of these things, and you start to study the books, there's books that fall under different genres. So the end times uh, subject itself, book of Revelation and all of these, it, it is apocalyptic literature. That's the genre that they fall, fall under or um, and or eschatology, which is which is a fancy word for the study of the end times. So I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Um, again, this is Daniel chapter 10. It says here, uh, starting in verse 1, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshaw. The message was true. But the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the, the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was girded with gold of upas the appearance of lightning his eyes like torches of fire his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude and i daniel alone saw the vision for the men who were with me did not see the vision but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me. For my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Praise Yah. So we'll stop there. Um, that's just, again, the vision of the glorious man. So um, this verse summarizes chapters 10 to 12 it is a verse one the third year of cyrus king of persia right so um it is 536 bc some two years after zerubbabel's return um but also in ezra chapter 3 verse 8 so Daniel's likely mourning because of continued reports on the state of Jerusalem. The heavenly messenger is awesome and full of splendor, resembling the beings of Ezekiel 1. He is not likely the pre-incarnate Messiah. Okay, so that's that's important, you know, so a lot of people might read because his appearance, the way they describe his appearance, it almost sounds like it's Yehusha Hamashiach himself, um, or the pre-incarnate messiah um just because of the uh again the description of the of the being of the messenger um says ten ten uh the visitation of the heavenly beings is to reinforce that Dan daniel's message is indeed from heaven all right so again it might not you know most likely is not a pre-incarnate messiah there so let me let me go on um verse verse 10 this is going to be start starting to talk about the prophecies concerning persia and greece verse 10 suddenly a hand touched me which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands he said to me oh daniel man greatly beloved understanding the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you while he was speaking this word to me I stood trembling then he said to me do not fear Daniel for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your Elohim your words were heard and I have come because of your words but the prince of the kingdom of Persia which stood me 21 days and behold Michael one of the chief princes came to help me for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. 
Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength re remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must prepare return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these except Michael, your prince. Praise Yah, word of the Lord. So we'll stop there. That's the end of chapter 10. Now, that's a lot. It's talking about um, that the messengers said that they he needed the assistance of Michael to overcome the kings of Persia. So let's just see in verse 13, chapter 10, verse 13. This is one of the clearest Old Testament examples that demonic armies oppose Yah's purposes and that earthly struggles often reflect what is happening in the heavenlies and that prayer with fasting may affect the outcome. The prince... Persia would be the head of the spiritual forces marshaled on behalf of sinful Persia, especially in relation to his destructive interaction with God's people. Michael is a senior angel. The exact nature of the conflict and why the messenger, messenger could not defeat the prince are not stated. Uh, verse 16, it is uncertain whether this is the messenger of verse 5 or a different one. All right, and, and verse 5 again is when it says, I lift it. I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold, with gold of upas. Right, so that may be the same man or a different one. Right, a different message, uh, the same messenger or a different one. Here. Um, verse 20 through chapter 11 verse 1 the heavenly beings the heavenly being realizes that his fight with persia's demonic guardian will be followed by a fight with greece's demonic guardian only michael assists him and the battle has been ongoing since the first year of darius wow you know so that just goes to show you i mean without getting you know ahead th there's definitely an, a battle going on in the spiritual realm all the time and that's also what sometimes we as followers of Yahushua lose sight of or forget, right? Um, we may not think of that every day, but there is definitely a battle going on for our souls and for the souls of men, women, and children everywhere. That's why also those who belong to Yahushua, Hamashiach, we need to pray uh, and pray without ceasing, and we need to uh, fast as well. And we need to guard our hearts and our minds in Messiah, right? Just be weary, uh, walk in righteousness, you know, walk in spirit and not in the flesh. We need to guard our hearts and our minds from what we uh, what we hear, what we um, take in with our ears, what we see, what we take in, right? What, what our eyes look upon, right? Um, walking in holiness. Uh, we need to mi be mindful of our tongues, how we speak. Uh, how we uh, conduct ourselves, you know, um, we to have integrity, right? I mean, it's obviously, right, do what you do in public, you should be doing in private, right? You shouldn't be acting two different ways, like one, right, one, one way in private and another in public, th therefore putting up like a show or putting up a front, you know, um, so there's definitely a the battle going on again for um and again th 
you know, giving the devil a foothold. Like I mentioned before, you know, if you're a follower of Yahusha and you're, you know, looking at Netflix or watching secular movies or delving in sexual morality, such as pornography or whatever, what, what, what have you, or, or cursing and all of these things, you're opening yourself up to, um, to forces. You're, you're opening yourself up to, to, to things, to demons, to, uh, um, spirits to come in and oppress you and, and hinder, you know, hinder you. Um, and God knows our hearts, you know, but, uh, we shouldn't be walking around lawless and, and just thinking that we're saved by grace and we just don't have to, right. If we're truly saved and the Holy spirit, um, uh, has taken up residence within us and there's that process of sanctification, right? There's walking in obedience and, and a wanting and a longing to be changed into the likeness of Messiah from the inside out. You know, we shouldn't be making excuses uh, uh, for ourselves. Um, um, yes, there's struggles and there's weaknesses that we can fall into. You know, don't, don't, I don't want anyone to hear this and think that I'm coming off as like, I'm, 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 I'm taking this also for myself. This is a pill that I have to swallow, um, as well. I'm not, I'm not trying to be on a, you know, quote unquote, super spiritual and say that, say this about other people. I'm taking this for myself as well. This advice, this encouragement, um, everyone has their struggles, but at the same time, we can't say, well, I'm struggling with this, but God knows my heart. You know, God also knows if we're making excuses for our sin or not. You know, um, we should be wanting to, if we are struggling with something, again, accountability, reach out to to a brother or sister, reach out, say, hey, I'm going through this. I've been going, I can't break free. I need prayer. Can you pray with me? Can you, uh, you know, and if you have a relationship with them, hang out with them, fellowship with them, you know, read your word, pray with them. Are, you know, again, the big one of the biggest things when we're going through struggles, especially um, those of a of a you know touchy, uh, uh, sensitive subject or what have you, maybe we're embarrassed. There's shame. There's guilt, uh, and all of these things. There's condemnation, um, and we tend to isolate ourselves. You know, the enemy loves that. The enemy doesn't want us reaching out to our brothers and sisters. The enemy doesn't want us calling a brother or sister or, or you know, he doesn't want that um, because we may get the healing. We may get breakthrough and he doesn't want that. He wants us isolated. He wants us uh, uh, going down that rabbit hole of sin um, and all of that. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely always a heavenly battle going on. Um, we don't see it. Obviously, uh, you know, Yahushua, you know, Yahuwah may give us insight, you know, he may, he may give us a dream or a vision or, a, you know, some sort of revelation, but usually he lets, be, he allows people to, 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 he may give somebody else a revelation. Somebody else may come and tell us, uh, or give us a word, um, but also he just may touch someone's heart to um, to check check up on us, you know. But again, it's up to us to be honest, you know, and be like, well, hey, you know, I'm not doing so well spiritually. Can you pray pray for me? Or is it just that, oh, yeah, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. But yet we're we're spiritually dry, you know. And again, that's something that we're lying. <laughs> we're lying to a brother or sister. We're, we're not OK. You know, um, you know, so that that's what I got to say about um, chapter 10. I just want to get into a little bit of, again, the um, apocalyptic genre. And uh, so this here, why the genre matters. So what does all this talk about literary, literary styles and genres have to do with the end times? Everything. Um, it's a kind of from the French genre genre which is excuse me a kind a sort or style a category of artistic or literary works that can be identified by by shared elements in form or content for example prose poetry or satire 
The biblical text that tells us about the end of time would pen a particular historical context that deeply influenced how the authors recorded God's words. What's more, many of these end time texts drew from literary backgrounds that had their own unique expectations for how readers would understand images and patterns in the book. Perhaps most important of all, if scripture came about because people spoke from Yahuwah as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit in 2 Peter 1.21. The very spirit of Yah was involved not only in the con- content of these texts, but also in the styles and genres that were chosen. To interpret these texts without knowing their original context and literary styles is to risk missing the point completely, much like our imaginary future archaeologist who might misread a 21st century political cartoon and conclude that a fiercely contested American election was actually a battle between two groups of mammals. Unless you keep in mind what genre of literature you are reading, it's easy to misinterpret and even to teach falsehoods falsehoods about the word of Yahuwah. What makes apocalyptic texts different? Even if you don't know a lot about the Bible, one thing becomes quite clear as you read, for example, the book of Revelation and the latter chapters of Daniel. They are very different from other texts in the Bible. Both Revelation and the last half of Daniel refer to the historical characters and events, but not in the same way as purely historical texts like the Gospels or Acts or the opening books of the Old Testament. The book of Revelation includes letters to seven churches in Asia Minor, yet these letters from the hand of John aren't anything like the correspondence that Paul sent to churches throughout the Roman Empire. For that matter, they aren't even like John's. Other three letters, in the, they're, uh, they're not even like John's other three letters in the New Testament. The prophet Daniel and John the Revealed Tour both describe dreams and visions, yet unlike the dreams of Joseph in the book of Genesis, the implication of these visions stretch far beyond one's individual personal destiny to include political events and even prophecies of the final resurrection. Much of the time, these texts can seem downright strange. John chews up a scroll and ends up with indigestion, and Daniel sees a flying leopard that leaps out of the sea and a one-horned goat that floats across the earth. In Daniel chapter 7, verses 3 to 6, chapter 8, verse 5, and Revelation chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. All of these experiences fall outside the usual boundaries of normal, even by biblical standards. So why are these books so different from other biblical texts? It's partly because their authors drew from an ancient literary genre known as apocalyptic. The word apocalyptic comes from the Greek word apokalupsos, which means revelation or unhiding a term that also happens to be the first word in the Greek text of Revelation. Ancient apocalyptic writings were filled with visions that reveal hidden truths in figurative language for the purpose of assuring persecuted people of the goodness of Yah's ways. Apocalyptic literature expressed both hope and lament during times of oppression, hurt, hope in, I'm sorry, hope in uh, Yah's sovereign rule over his world coupled with Lamentation over the ways in which sin had distorted Yah's world. Genre of ancient Jewish literature presented in the form of visions that figuratively reveal hidden truths for the purpose of assuring God's people of the goodness of God's plans during periods of persecution. All right. Apocalyptic thinking began to blossom among the Jewish people in the aftermath of their defeat at the hands of the Babylonians, their de- deportation, and the destruction of their temple in the early 6th century BC. Ezekiel and Daniel were written during this time, Ezekiel 37 to 39, and the last six chapters of Daniel represent pre apocalypses or early expressions of, of apocalyptic thinking. After the days of Daniel and Ezekiel, other Jewish writers pen more elaborate apocalypses that don't appear in the Old or New Testaments. There are texts that falsely claim to come from Enoch, for example, and others that allege origins in the lifetimes of Abraham and Noah and Moses. Although the Jewish people never viewed these apocalyptic texts as part of their scriptures, these documents probably did preserve a few truthful traditions, and the New Testament writers seem to have been familiar with them. Although the book of Revelation is not completely apocalyptic, John's imagery closely resembles the other apocalypses that were familiar to so many first century Jews. The New Testament book of Jude specifically references passages passages from two Jewish apocalypses, one Enoch in Jude 14 through 15, and Assumption of Moses in Jude 9. 
So what are the primary patterns that Daniel and Revelation share with other ancient apocalyptic texts? Number one, these texts reveal hidden truths through visions. Number two, God's people are encouraged to remain faithful during a time of persecution. Number three, God's people are ensured that despite the seeming hopelessness of their present circumstances, Yah will someday punish sin and make the world right. Right? So, and characteristics of Jewish apocalyptic literature. Number one, assurance. The author assures readers that Yah will break into the present age in a way that transforms the world and establishes a new and different existence for his people. Number two, angels. Angelic mediators convey God's message to a chosen recipient. Number three, journey. The human recipient journeys into a heavenly realm. Four, visions. Highly symbolic and figurative visions describe present spiritual realities and future divine interventions. Number five, warnings. Yah's people are warned about coming distresses and trials. Number six, encouragement. The persecuted faithful are encouraged to pers persevere knowing that Yah is working in present unseen realities and that Yahuwah will intervene in the future. Number seven, final judgment. One or more portions of the text include a vision of final judgment. Praise Yah. Um, we'll leave it there. You know, I just felt led to share that as well. And it's a lot to unpack. It's a lot to discuss when you're talking about the subject of the end times and and the genre again that it falls under um, apocalyptic literature. So again, and and the reason why the Ruha Hakadesh has led me to just enter into this whole uh, series in the first place, starting with Revelation, is is because of the times that we're living in, and we need we as believers believers in Yahushua Hamashiach who love him, who serve him, who walk with him, um, need to understand these things and, and need to um, get a biblical understanding, if you will, of the times that we are living in. Um, and what does the Bible say about it? Because again, we're blessed. You know, let me just say that also. Um, a lot of followers of Yahuwah may feel a lot of pressure you know i mean obviously if you're in different parts of the world and you're really are facing persecution i'm here in the west we really aren't facing persecution like that um for our faith but um we will be it's just it's only a matter of time um and just be encouraged some of us may think may feel the pressure and may feel and question sometimes, is it worth it, right? Um, and the devil may even come and, and try and entice us away um, and, and things like that and distract us. He definitely does, does distract us each and every day. Uh, he tries to do that. But it is worth it. Let me just encourage you, brother or sister, if I'm speaking to someone out there, it is worth it. I myself have gone through discouragement. I, I'm currently in a season of that right now. Um, 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 on different in different um, different points in my walk and, and different things. Um, but we need to encourage one another. It is worth it because what's the alternative? You know, are we convinced that Christianity is true, or are we just holding on just to hold on? You know, our faith needs to have legs. Our, we need to walk this thing out. We need to apply it to our lives. And we need to encourage and build up uh, one another in love and, and strengthen one another. Um, this is no time to be isolated as a believer. And, you know, like I said, it is worth it. Um, you know, facing whatever persecution or trials or hardships you know, um, trials, you know, uh, um, our characters be molded into that of Messiah through the trials. You know, um, we, we may not necessarily have control over what happens to us, but we have a choice in how we, we react to it, right? We have a choice. We need to choose forgiveness instead of bitterness. We need to choose to forgive. We need to choose to love. That That's not easy, but there's an intentionality in it, you know? 
faith by definition is supernatural. You know, um, people like to say, well, I serve a practical God too. God works in the practical. He does, but God is not practical. He's not a practical God. He's a supernatural God. He, you know, he does miracles, you know, um, you know, he, is he concerned with every detail of, of our lives? Absolutely. Absolutely. He is. So he's concerned with the way we balance our checkbook and our finances and all of that. But the, the Bible has a lot to say about, about money and for us to be good stewards and whatnot. But, um, some people, some believers just dwindle, dwindle him down and put him in a box marked God practical, right? And they don't, they don't hold out for the miracles. They don't believe, they may be, believe in miracles for someone else, but they may not believe it for themselves. So anyway, I don't want to go off onto another tangent, but I digress. It's, it's definitely worth it, you know, um, especially if you're a follower of Yahushua and your eyes are open and you're not following the rhetoric and the narrative of the day. You're, you're awake. You're not plugged into the matrix, as it were. You're seeing things for what they are. Um, and you continue to persevere in your faith and don't give up, you know, don't give up. You know, so blessings and yeah, that, that's really all I have. Um, I hope that you heard my heart. And again, reach out, you know, um, whatever you want to, if you want a subject discussed or you have questions, reach out, Facebook, Salt and Light, um, as well as you could uh, leave comments on my episodes on YouTube, Salt and Light. And, you know, I share them on Instagram. Uh, uh, me we and getter and like i said they're also available on all those other platforms that you can listen uh, on so god bless you blessings and y'all i pray everyone is safe and is having a blessed um weekend shalom and we'll see you all next week as we delve into i believe it's chat I'm, I'm going to um skip Daniel chapter 11 and go to Daniel chapter 12, which is the last chapter. And we'll wrap up the book of Daniel. Um, chapter 12 is just, again, prophecy concerning the prophecy of the end time. So, so God bless you in Yahushua HaMashiach. I love you all.